Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, here we are uh, Monday night, live, 8.15, and uh, this hat makes me look like I'm all, it's all dark and everything, with the lights. <clears throat> Anyways, I want to make sure you guys can hear me. Uh, if somebody can just let me know, that would be fantastic, because I've got a microphone in to hopefully uh, make this sound better. Elizabeth, can you hear me? Yes, no, maybe so, not so sure. Yes, you can, no, you can't. You hear me, awesome, good. <clears throat> I was hoping you were gonna say that. So, you guys, this sweet little thing over here is uh, pretty crazy. It's been so much fun. You guys wanna meet her? You wanna see her? I'm sure, right, yeah? Hey Kelly, Astrid, how are you guys doing? Melinda, Linda, Robin. Uh, so, without further ado, hold on. Gemma, come here. She's kind of tired. She's getting a little, uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to say rambunctious, but today was her first day at daycare, so uh, tomorrow is going to be better. Uh, I don't think she had enough rest. Come here. Gemma, Gemma. Come here. Ooh. Come here. Get your feet up here. And say hi to everybody. Say hi everybody, my name's Gemma. Yes, we'll get the camera in a little closer so everybody can see you. Because she's clearly the star of the show and not me. Let me get my, my hand underneath her here. There. So, this is Gemma. Can you look up and say hi to everybody? Can you look up? Say hi. Hi, everybody. There she is, you guys. This is Gemma. She is a sweetie. Even sitting here like this, she doesn't really struggle to <clears throat> get down or anything like that. But uh, she is Millie. She's eight, a little eight and a half. Like, she'll be nine weeks on Wednesday. So, this is what I love about her, though, is that she can just sit here and just chill out. Lori, she eats a cup and a half a day of Zignature, uh, which is obviously a really good food. So, uh, you know, high quality food. So we've just been uh, just kind of hanging out here for a few minutes, but uh, so she did have a little accident tonight, you guys, full transparency. Uh, she was just kind of lying down a little bit. This is what I mean, she was kind of in between being perfectly comfortable and uh, it looked like she was sniffing a little bit. So um, she got up, whimpered, and then like peed. Like I don't, I don't, I can't imagine anybody would have caught that at all with their puppy. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but I've been tethering her in the house and all she does is she's on a blanket or a towel and that's it. So um, she's, let me get this back up a little bit more so you guys can see her. <laughs> There. Uh, so she's on a blanket or a towel. So any accidents are pretty easy to, to clean up. And um, it's been pretty pretty easy going so far. Uh, no accidents last night. And I bring that up a lot, you guys, because again, like I said, no trainer is immune to bladder and that kind of thing. It's just all a part of what's happening. So uh, she's... Uh, She's doing pretty well. You guys, socially, at work today was amazing. Uh, I mean, it was pretty awesome. Andrea, for Maddie and Shiloh, this has been business as usual. I mean, it's like no, nothing different to them, you know? So it's like, whatever. Socially, she is like, she's curious of other dogs, um, but then she just kind of goes to do her own thing. She doesn't retreat. Um, <clears throat> I gotta get you comfy. I don't know how long she'll stay like this, we'll see. Um, she's curious, and then she'll just move away and go back to doing her own thing. Um, we had another puppy there today that was not uh, three months old, and she did really well with her. Her name was Ellie. It was funny, in the beginning, they were kind of barking at each other like siblings, like, what are you doing? No, what are you doing? And uh, there we go, now she's got her head down. And they ended up playing together, which was really good because I hadn't actually, I hadn't actively seen her play. 
So, um, Dale, I don't know if they've been known for being mellow, but like I said, I've always liked the vibe. Hey, Roxanne. And, you know, that's been a part of it. It's, you know, just the overall uh, energy level, you know? So, sorry for all the camera stuff, but I'm sure, again, you guys see me every, my, every Monday night. You don't see her. Um, but just socially, she just did fantastic. Like, I, I, I couldn't ask for anything more out of an eight-week-old puppy bringing her into the social area at all. I mean, and even outside, um, she peed inside it at work once today, uh, which again, as puppies doing their thing, and it's raining out, so we don't go out a lot. But otherwise, you guys, I've been right on it with everything else. Like I feel we've definitely had way more success than accidents, that's for sure. And <clears throat> um, last night, like I said on the Facebook post this morning, she had eight hours of sleep. I mean, it was pretty amazing what she did. So, but even here, you guys, you can see her eyes. Like, this is her. She's just, she's just relaxed. Elizabeth, I know, right? Perma smile? Totally. <clears throat> and you guys, so here's the thing too, is I, as I'm petting her here, notice this is very like slow and methodical, right? This isn't like quick or anything like that. And it's just, it's more relaxing, right? And you can get into the slow motion massage. <clears throat> so, Eric, thanks for the congrats, I appreciate it. Melinda, um, yes, pretty soon she will not be a lap dog anymore. But you guys, when I talk about slow motion massage with a dog, like this is what I'm talking about. So even though my voice, I can sit here and rattle off and keep talking to you guys, it's all about the massage work, okay? One thing that she's been doing a lot of is trying to itch towards her collar because she hasn't ever obviously worn a collar. So we're going through that aspect of everything too. Uh, and sometimes I think it's a little distracting to her. So I took it off her for most of the day at daycare today so she can be her, which is what I really want. I don't want her to have to focus on you know, the, the collar all day. So, um, but anyways, you know, otherwise you guys, I, so at the end of the day, we vacuum up our floor in our social area and with a big shop vac, it didn't even phase her at all. I mean, at all. No barking, <coughs> excuse me, none of that. Um, no coming over and snapping at it. So, I mean, she just did really well with it. You have to excuse me with my voice. I get, there's like a scratch in my throat today, so. And you guys, anything and everything, if she wants to sniff it, let her sniff it, right? Like, it's all a part of her getting to know everything. It's all a part of it. So, <clears throat> I'm, overall, I'm really, really happy with the whole experience for the first few days. Um, she's just doing really, really well with everything. Um, again, you guys, I'm here to answer any questions. So, Mary, here we go. Mary, excitement levels. Her excitement levels right now are a little bit of playing. I uh, actually heard her bark a few times when she was trying to feel out the other dog with their playing. And uh, so I've got a crate set up in my office. And I gave her probably <clears throat> three to four hours of downtime today. Actually, should have given her more. So I broke it up. I got to work around eight. And then she was out until about, I think... 9 30 ish and then I put her in her crate until about I don't know I would guess 11 or 11 30 and then back out for a while and then back into the crate this afternoon for it might have been a couple of hours I woke her up both times too, going to get her um, being so asleep in the crate and then this afternoon um, I actually I should have put her away. I knew it. I didn't follow my instincts then, which is, that's where I tend to beat myself up over, is not following my instincts. Because she was lying down in social and sleeping in social. I mean, so I, she has that ability to regulate herself. And <clears throat> I probably should have just given her more time, more downtime there than, than anything. Um, but I didn't. And that's why I feel like she's just a little... a little more personality tonight than what I normally had seen. So, 
uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll change it. I'll probably give her three downtimes throughout the day. But that that's really, you know, the, the gist of the excitement. I've, I, you know, I've got toys and Kongs for her to play with, everything. So uh, Eric says, what strategy do you find to stop puppy biting and mouthing? Honestly, uh, obviously I haven't gotten to that stage with her yet. Everything that we that we do or to me the cause of that is usually overstimulation, over excitement. They just haven't been able to function. So they end up uh, mouthing because they're just so overtired and so rammy and everything. So um, that's my opinion and theory now. Um, if she ever if she doesn't ever go through that phase, then I'll understand maybe that she's getting ample rest. If she's going through that phase and she's getting rest, then I'll then I'll you know deal with it the way that I need to. But right now she's doing you know we haven't gotten into the mouthiness or anything like that. The other part of it too is that I don't play with her with my hand. Uh, she's got a little stuffy kind of thing and Kongs, and I'll usually give that a little life for her to play with. You, you know, like I'll move it around and and kind of give it life and bounce it in front of her and stuff to make her go after that. I don't want to make her go after my hands at all. So. I take away all that mouthing and and that kind of thing. I don't I don't even want to create it, you know. So, uh, Cindy, counting sleep time, how many hours a day does she need to have downtime? You know, for her, um, I'm still kind of feeling it out, Cindy. I don't know if I can give you the true answer to that yet, but I would say so. She had eight hours last night, and then, uh, you know, I'm in the car. Well, it wasn't that long this morning, half an hour. So I don't know if she slept then. So eight hours there plus another 12, oh wait, plus another four is 12. I should have given her more. Um, plus right now she'd normally be in her crate until we actually go to bed. So we're looking at another hour and a half, you know, probably 13 and a half and I probably missed a couple hours with her today. So, you know, I'm probably looking at in that 15 to 18 range depending on the days. I mean you guys you can see it in her face right now Like she's tired <laughs> She's resting her hand here. Can you rest your hand on my? Yeah, see look You face the camera there she is see like This is this is just her needing this downtime and this this rest time if they don't get their rest They're gonna get rest less Okay, and that there's a huge difference there so it's all a part of it and she's doing great you know the other thing i love about her is that uh i can actually uh there i had to drop the leash i need it on right now um we can do this i know i know this is actually the most active i've seen her doing this i know sweetie i know not gonna do it now this is the first time she fought it see she's just a little tired that's all she's just tired don't rip my microphone out that'd be trouble don't do that so I'm not gonna put her through that that's the first time every other time I've done that she's just been like she'll crash so I'm gonna put her down because I think she needs some normal on the floor time right now uh, that's gonna be good for her I think she needs to rest. I think I'm pushing my pushing my limits here with her a little bit. So, uh, yeah, like, see? Like, right down. She's exhausted, and all she wants to do is sleep. So it's all a part of it, you know? Rest, you guys. Rest, 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 rest. Puppies need rest. You can't... You can't replace that with puppies. There's there's no replacing it. You can only get so much out of them socially or even working with them one on one. You just can't get you, you can't push them like you can other dogs. They just don't have that attention span. It's no different than like a little kid to an adult. They just don't have that attention span. And if you understand that, um, that's why I said like even here I just I was pushing it a little too far with her. And that's okay. She let me know. I know what my boundaries are with her as far as what I'm able to do when and when she needs her sleep and her rest. Um, so, you know, she will start to, she'll crash when she gets into that crate tonight. 
I'm sure of it. So, but like I said, tomorrow will be, you know, much different with the way that I work her through the day. I think she needs more crate time. And you guys, when I say, like I said, every time I gave her a break today, it's in, in a crate. Like she needs that downtime. She needs that structure. I mean, I could tether to her, tether to her, tether her something. Oh my gosh. Tether her to something at work. Uh, but I don't think it gave her ample rest time. And I think that's also why she's crashed so hard here too, was I, I needed to give her extra rest. So I'm learning. This is a process that I'm going through just as well as everybody else um, does with their dog too. So, um, Millie, yeah, she does have sleepy eyeballs. That's for sure. Um, so Nina said it also depends on the type of breed you get and the temperament of the breed. Uh, very, very, very true. Can you over-exercise a puppy? Elizabeth, yes. Like if I took her out and just started to go for a walk or um, just tried to play with her or whatever, I may not get far. You know, if I wanted to try to teach her recall or anything like that, I may not get far with her. And here's the, here's the other thing too, you guys, and I may have mentioned this, I may not, I don't know. I am not teaching her how to sit. That's number one. And number two, I'm actually not going to teach her any obedience for a while. I don't know when I will start, uh, but I'm not going to because I never did with my dogs. Um, I think between Maddie and Shiloh right now, and even when I had Lula, uh, the three dogs probably got less than 10 actual training sessions So, uh, in their whole life. Otherwise, it was all social or walks, and that was it. So... Um, I, I just, I want to live this. I want to enjoy this. I want to see her as a puppy. I don't want to create a machine by any means, which nobody wants a machine out of their dog. We want a nice personality with our dogs and, and we don't want to take that away. That's why we get a dog. But I want to look at this from a learning perspective. I don't want to look at this from uh, an obedience way. And you guys, please understand I have nothing against obedience. We teach it at work. Um, you know, we teach a ton of stuff. So don't think that I'm trying to take away from that. What I want to do is create a dog with social skills, with people, and with dogs. Uh, a lot of times, once you have that down, a lot of other issues just don't appear. And if I can give her proper uh, downtime and proper rest and structure, then I think we'll be in good shape. But it's all a part of that aspect of you know the boundaries and the structure that you create now you'll see she hasn't moved at all right nothing ever since i put her down so you see what i mean she's that tired uh that she's not gonna do anything or go anywhere so okay i think i missed a couple of questions no elizabeth what do you do when she barks and cries at three in the morning uh cindy so the first morning we had her it was about three fifteen. And um, she got up, I let her outside. She had to do her business. Uh, actually, uh, I rephrased that. Uh, she peed on me. I don't know if I put that on the Facebook. I think I put up that I got up at 3.15. But I wasn't thinking. See, I, yeah, I told you guys, I was gonna go through the same thing that you guys go through. And this is what I mean. So she barked or started whimpering at 3.15 or so. So we got her Saturday. So this has been like Saturday night, Sunday morning. And, uh, at, in the crate, so I went to get her. I wasn't thinking that, I forgot about having to take her down the stairs. Like I carried her up the stairs, like, okay, I'm gonna go upstairs, put her on the floor, get her into her crate, whatever. Got her out of her crate and thinking, okay, I haven't taught her how to go downstairs yet. So not knowing what else to do, because I'm sure she had to go to the bathroom, I picked her up and uh, pressure on a full bladder and it cut loose and she peed on me. And I know I had to get her downstairs and she peed a little bit more on the stairs and then I went outside and then she finished up. At that point I brought her inside and she seemed a little bit more full of it so I ended up taking a Kong, uh, putting some peanut butter in it and that helped subside her for a little bit, put her in a crate. Um, it was probably, you guys, 45 minutes to an hour before she settled down so yeah, I was up. I was up. I'm not, I'm, again, just like any other dog owner. Um, and she fell back to sleep, I fell back to sleep, and I was kind of a zombie a little bit Sunday morning. But the interesting part was, for me, I was actually, I felt like I was in my head too much. 
rather than going with my gut and my instinct. Like if, a, if like one of you guys asked me a question about what you were going through with your dog and I totally could have given you the answer, but to me, I had all these thoughts from a different perspective going on and it and actually took me a good probably half three quarters of a day to process everything and then like go with, finally get that feeling back in my gut of okay, these are what your instincts are telling you, Ian. This is what you have to go with um, and and do this. And once I started listening to that, then things got a little bit easier. So um, that's what happened. Uh, who I can't remember who just asked the question. Um, Cindy, yeah. So, you know, I think that, you know, what, what can you do at this stage? A couple knocks on the crate to maybe settle them down. If that doesn't work, then it's right outside to go to the bathroom and then right back in, right back into the crate. So that's a part of it. If you need to give them a Kong or something like that to subside them, to soothe them, I'm okay with that, you know, to, to, to help you. Uh, but eventually, I think, you know, the other part of it too is you gotta make sure that water is picked up. Like no water after six o'clock. And make sure you've taken them out a few times after six o'clock to kind of empty that bladder. She she still hasn't moved yet. So I, again, she's she's exhausted. And when I get done with you guys, we're going back outside again. Hopefully she'll do her business. And then from there, we're going right up into the crate. And that's the night. So um, we'll go from there. Uh, Andrew, I've noticed even with Denali, who's almost two years old, he behaves better when he has his crate time throughout the day. Yes, they need that downtime, that quiet. They need time to process. Absolutely. Uh, how old when they don't need that crate time anymore? Honestly, I would give it to them the whole life, their whole lives. The, we're in my basement down here, and I think eventually I'm going to take some kennels from work and put them down here so when we're gone, um, they can go into there and... She can still have maybe not that crate time, but a kennel time or something like that to where she can just kind of have her own place and everything. And you guys, I, I'm actually the same way. I need my time um, to myself, like no work, no dogs, no family, no nothing. And sometimes that's my time to process. And uh, if it's in my office without any dogs in there, like even my own, then that's then that's it. But I, I need that time to kind of decompress, process that time to yourself. Um, and get through everything there. Uh, Amy, my five-month-old pup starts some obedience June 10th. We have been socializing for about two months, so I hope the timing will be right. That's great, Amy. Absolutely. Um, Jennifer, my puppy was very sick when we got him and fought for his life for a few weeks. He missed that ideal socializing stage. Is it too late to socialize him? He loves humans, but is terrified of other animals. No, it's not too late. It may take longer, but it's not too late. We get that question all the time. Can I, can my 10-year-old socialize? Yeah. Uh, but it might take longer because I, I mean not knowing what that 10 year old is like if he's vicious it's gonna take way longer uh, if he's a really good dog it may not take as long so it really depends on the dogs and the and the experience the dog has gone through you know I'm hoping my voice isn't too crackly for you guys it sounds way worse than I feel like I feel fine um, but she rolled over. See? Sleepy puppy. Sleepy, sleepy puppy. Out cold. So again, tomorrow she's going to get more downtime with everything. And uh, yeah, that's, that's you know, I can't stress that enough. It's, it's all in the downtime. And I learned that today too, right? I've never had an eight-week-old puppy that I've watched for 24-hour span so I'm still kind of learning about her. She actually surprised me. I, I feel like she can last longer than um, what I expected. I thought 10, 15, 20 minutes and then she'd be toast. And for her, it's somewhere between like 40 minutes to an hour and 15 or some, somewhere in that. I think that might be her ideal range. So um, I was never aware of that kind of thing when I got Maddie as a puppy because I wasn't in a, into training or anything. I was learning about dogs then. Like early 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 on but it wasn't anywhere near to the degree now obviously so but so I was thinking about this today you guys too is uh, and I've got um, a shadow student with me this week named Adam all the way from California to come observe and watch and see what we do um, and it was it was interesting I don't know why this thought popped in my head but 
you guys have seen me talk about tools, or you heal, you are he. Oh my gosh, you will hear trainers talk about tools, whether it's a slip lead or a clip leash or a flat collar or a uh, like a martingale or a halter, a halty or a gentle leader or whatever. And you can accomplish many goals with different tools, or you know you can use two different tools and get the same result. You see what I mean? See where I'm going? Uh, like a gentle leader and a halty. You can probably achieve the same goal with those two tools, maybe just a little differently than one another, but you'll still still get there. Um, you know, like a martingale and a flat collar, you'll still probably get to where you need to get, just a couple different avenues. But socially, there is no substitute for a controlled environment at all. I've been racking my brain since I said that. Socially, there is no different tool that is better than a controlled environment. If you think about it, socially with other dogs or even people, there's nothing better than a controlled environment. You can't substitute that and still get there without going way longer. You know, if you're trying to, to socialize your dog at a dog park, there's no guarantee of what you're going to end up with. Or, I mean, you may get social with other people or people coming over your house, they may, your dog may be social. But if you're working on a dog trying to get social skills, again, controlled environment is your place to be there. Otherwise, there is no other way. There's no other way. If you practice having your friends come over, that's great. But if you're trying to create social skills, you're going to need a revolving door of people for how long? But again, that's still a controlled environment because you're controlling those people coming over to your house. You're giving them the rules of what you need from them and for your dog. So it's still a controlled environment. There's just there's just no way around it that I can think of. If you can think of something, then let me know. But I'm more than happy to say, hey, there's the one reason or the one other option that you can do. But to me, I the controlled environment is it. I, I don't I can't think of anything else at all. So uh but it's been interesting how that works. Tool wise, something physically that you can put in your hand you can get the dog to do the same thing with two different tools. Long, you know, a long leash, 15 foot leash, or a four foot leash. You can accomplish the same thing, you know? That's what I mean. But a controlled, a, a, a controlled environment for social skills, you just, there's no substitution. There isn't at all. So, anyways, that's my spiel for tonight, you guys. Uh, I know she's the star of the show tonight. I'm certainly not. She's still out out like a light zonked so um, just a <laughs> which is good maybe I get some sleep tonight too uh, Astrid we socialize Rex all the time at stores where dogs are allowed school games yes but those stores are not controlled environments you don't know what dogs are coming in there you don't know what person is coming around the corner if they're good with dogs or if they're not good with dogs so that's great that you do that, Astrid, but it's certainly not a controlled environment in my estimation at all because you don't know those other stores. And we've even seen dogs in grocery stores, okay? I mean, we don't need to get started on that. But anyways, you guys, I just put up a post on Fa uh, YouTube, okay? Um, and I am not taking any credit for this. I'm, ta I'm taking like 0% credit. Um, George Cockrell, which I think you probably heard me say his name a number of times, uh, gave me this advice to do as soon as I get Gemma was to go out in a yard or a field. He said a field, which I don't really have a random field to, to try it in. So I did it in our yard at work, which is about a half an acre fenced in. And he said, you know, carry her in, put her down, we'll walk away. No words, no nothing. Uh, in his estimation, this was going to create a drive for her to follow me. I don't have anything to compare it to as far as what she would have done without that, um, but I put it up. It's on the Dog Trainer Daily stuff on YouTube. It's like a minute and a half video, and you'll see just exactly how I did it. So I've been getting a number of questions of, or mentions, I guess you could say, from people that are saying, you know, here's a share to somebody that's getting a puppy, or so-and-so is getting a puppy soon, so... Um, you know, check this guy out for information. So if you know anybody that's getting a puppy or has a new puppy 
I would suggest this technique. It, it worked wonderfully. I mean, wonderfully. I don't even know if there's a name to it or anything, but I don't know if this is just some old school dog training stuff that just is just resonates with them, but it's pretty awesome the way it worked. Um, so the stuff, there's going to be stuff that you guys don't see on Facebook that's on the YouTube channel, just Vermont Dog Trainer, and um, so check that stuff out there too. So I do a good mix of both, that's for sure. So, uh, but that was that was pretty cool stuff, that's for sure. So these two are going to, uh, she's going to her crate, I'm going to my bed. I'm gonna let her out one more time. And we're gonna call it a night. So I hope you guys enjoy this, kind of seeing her progress here. I think it's uh, pretty cool stuff. As I've said before, there's tons of information that I'm learning that I'm more than happy to pass on to you guys. And, you know, I think this is fun. We're all kind of learning and watching her grow and seeing these patterns emerge and seeing where she's at and all that kind of stuff. And it's so cool also for me to share this with you too, you guys. I think it's pretty neat to be able to show you, you know, what I'm going through. Full transparency here. You guys have any questions, I will tell you. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to, uh, whatever you want to know, I'm more than happy to tell you. So, anyways, lovely to see her. She'll sleep well tonight, Millie. I think so. I think so. I may have to. Uh, <laughs> I gotta wake her up to go back outside. But it's good. That's the other thing. Make sure when you wake a dog up or once they get up from their downtime, right outside. Both times today I got her out of the crate. Uh, we went outside at work and she peed. So again, also teaching her where to go and also knowing when she wants to go. So all a part of it. But anyways, you guys, um, she might become a regular here on Monday nights. Who knows? I'm sure you guys want to see her, so she'll probably hang around for a while. But she's fun. You guys have a great night. Thanks for jumping on here with me tonight. I love that you guys do this, and you guys are so interactive with this too, which is awesome. Uh, if you guys weren't talking, I probably wouldn't do this, so I appreciate it. And again, if you guys know anybody that's going through a puppy, share this stuff, because I'm, I'm an open book here. I am more than happy um, to share this stuff, to help out with anybody that's got a puppy. Spring, summertime's an awesome time to get a puppy, so you can do stuff with them. Um, so it's a lot of fun. So. And you guys know me, I'm not gonna ask you to buy anything of mine. I'm not trying to sell you anything, unless you need training. Um, but the one thing I ask, or maybe two, I might get greedy tonight, you guys. The one thing I can ask is just share my Facebook page with other dog owners, that's number one, because I really enjoy educating and teaching and just making people more aware. Um, and then number two, you guys, if you could leave a review on Facebook, uh, on my page just to let me know maybe what you've learned what you enjoy whether you're you know whether you live in Australia and you just follow this <laughs> um, and you like the information or you've done training with us or daycare or boarding um, I would just love to hear and I you know what if you give me a one star I'm fine with that too so don't think I'm just asking for five star reviews here I'm not I want to know all honesty I want to know full transparency from you guys too there's something that you think that I can do better on here or that we can do better as a staff at work, I wanna know about it. I wanna know. Um, and I will do my best to make it better for you guys too. That's that's my promise to you. So that's my that's my two favors I'm asking for you tonight. That's it. Other than that, nothing. I got nothing for you. I'll, I'll give you all the information in the world. Anything that you wanna ask, I'm here for you. So uh, I'm sure we'll see you between now and next Monday. Um, at some point or another. So you guys have a great night. We're off to catch some Z's. See you guys.